Hi, learner lovers. This is Tracy of Totally Not Taboo. This is where we talk about sex and sexuality that is taboo. So welcome to our program. Today in studio, we have the lovely Leah Jazz. She is a broadcaster, DJ, content creator, and certified sex educator. She is the founder and creative director at Eden, the disobedient dance party where kink is culture and sin is sacred. Oh, Leah, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's very exciting to have you on our podcast. Um, I've been, my social media has been picking up a lot of feeds from you, um, pictures and very, very spicy, kinky pictures um, going on at Eden. Yes. So firstly, I'd like you to just tell us a little bit more about yourself before we get into Eden. Cool. Also the sex educator yes. I'm very interested in. Yes. So tell me, go for it. So I host a late night show on 5FM between 10pm and 1am Monday to Thursday. Um I got into broadcasting actually via stand-up comedy. I've done a little bit of everything. Honestly, if I can talk, then I'm in. <laughs> um, yeah, so I host the show. The sex ed stuff came from when I first, when I was in varsity, I learned about period poverty and that there are girls who can't attend school because of lack of access to sanitary products. And this really upset me. I was a young feminist and sort of finding my feet and learning about feminism. And I thought that this was such a deep injustice. And so I wanted to do something about it. And then it became a case of, well, you can't just give out sanitary products. People actually need to know about their menstrual cycle. But when it's the menstrual cycle, it's not just your period, it's your whole cycle. It's ovulation, it's your entire reproductive, everything about your body. And then it's like, okay, we need to learn about the body. If we're going to learn about the body and sex and reproduction, then we should also learn about pleasure. We should know our anatomy. And suddenly I was just head, like head and shoulders deep in the world of just learning about sex for myself um, so that I could be a safe place for other people. Because um, I think that knowledge is power. And I think that when we can share that knowledge, then we can help other people feel powerful as well. I only learned that my discharge changes at different times of my cycle and is actually telling me messages about my body when I was in like second year varsity. And I was like, nobody ever explained to me that like the goopy egg whitey stuff means that you're ovulating. I just was, I just kind of thought that it was only happening to me. So I realized that when we start talking about things, um, we can remove the shame and understand that it's not just us. It's not just me who's going through this thing. It's a thing that we're all experiencing and knowing more about your body makes you feel more powerful. It not, not even feel more powerful. It literally does make you more powerful. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Knowledge is power. 100%. Um, and that's incredible. It's, we've, we've got a long way to go, but at least we've got, we, we started, we've started some way. Definitely. And I'm so lucky to have the platform that I do on mm. 5FM because um, they let me kind of do what I want, mm. especially late at night. It's great. Um, and we can talk about anything. There is nothing that's off limits. Um, and we've had questions about all sorts of things. And it's really, really cool to be able to have a platform like that and, and dispense that knowledge and empower other people. Mm. Um, and the questions <laughs> range from everything from... I found weird porn on my husband's computer to where is the clitoris actually? And it's really cool to be able to, without shame, uh, we, mm. we, we bring sex ed that is medically accurate, evidence-based, and most importantly, judgment-free. And um, we remove shame from the equation and suddenly you're free to talk about whatever you need to talk about um, so that people feel safe. Amazing. And powerful. Fantastic. And you've got a Thursday late night... Um, chat, I think you said half past 10 to half past 12 or something, was so it? So from 10 till 11, mm. we'll have a different topic that we'll speak about. Sometimes I'll have a guest in studio. So um, Dr. Gaini, Dr. Zender is coming Not to chat. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll either have an expert or I'll deep dive into a particular topic. This month we've been focusing specifically on women's health. So mm. we spoke about, we spoke, wow, we've <laughs> spoken 
We've spoken about reproductive health, um, how to know when you're ovulating, things like that, um, issues you might find with reproduction or fertility. So yeah, we nothing is nothing is off limits. And then from 11 till 12, we open up the hotline for all your sex questions. Amazing. But that's only a Thursday night, you said. It's only a Thursday night. I try and sneak in <laughs> a little bit of sex ed whenever I can. But um, it's a late night show on a commercial radio station. Mm. We make it fun. I do fake news, which is a political satire. On Wednesdays, we have no stupid questions where people ask anything about anything. And that's always fun. Things like, why do men have nipples? And um, you know, why is Greenland called Greenland if it's covered in ice? Um, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So we have debate nights. We, we yeah, it's lots of fun. Awesome. Okay. So I want to know all about Eden. Mm. Um, as I said, I see these exotic um, pictures <laughs> coming up all over my feed and I'm absolutely intrigued so please tell us um, all about what Eden is. I founded Eden because I didn't find a space in Joburg that accommodated what I wanted in a space. So it was a passion project for me. I wanted to make a space that I wanted to be in and attend. Um, I'd been to parties in London where, I mean, it's, it's explosive. It's completely different to even what we do. Um, and I just found that there wasn't anything that filled the gap. I tried a couple of kink spaces here in Joburg and in Durban, and I just, I found it to be, yo, I'm afraid that I'm going to, that someone might hear this and feel offended, but it is what it is. This is totally not taboo. I found it to be really sleazy, mm -hmm. really uncomfortable, and really quite hardcore. I also found a lack of vetting in a lot of these spaces where anybody was just able to come in and that made me feel really unsafe. Like mm. I didn't feel that I could express myself fully in an, in a space like that without feeling so many eyes on me because there were no boundaries, there were no rules. And so for us or for me, I always talk about Eden as a collective or as an us, as a we, because there are so many people who help to make it happen. But often I say we when really I mean me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, uh, a friend of mine, a colleague, um, Kyle Das Capital, started this party down in Cape Town called Repentance. And he called me up one day and he said, look, I want to do this kind of kinky party and I don't know how to do it. And I don't know what I'm like, can you help me with the guidelines and the rules? And I was like, cool, let's brainstorm this. So I consulted him about this party and I was always so jealous that I couldn't go because it was all the way in Cape Town. And then one day he just, like, we were on the phone. And he just said to me, don't be fucking stupid. Just start your own party. Mm. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. I didn't really have much experience in events apart from throwing really spectacular house parties. So I just started it. I just did it. I, I put a little brand together. I have a history in branding. Huh. Um, and I'm, I'm learning about business. It's really not my forte, but I'm trying um, and upskilling where I can. But I can create a hell of a brand. So I started the brand and I went live on Instagram and Kyle just straight up posted it on the repentance page being like, go follow Eden. I was like, I'm not ready for all this exposure. And in the first day we had over a hundred followers and I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to do this now. It was kind of trial by fire. I got thrown into it. Well, I threw myself into it and Kyle just sort of, instead of like giving me a little nudge, he just like pushed me off the cliff. Uh, and it was cool that we could consult each other and collaborate on these things. Um, I really thought that the events industry would have more of a sense of collaboration, but I think I'm discovering it's a little more competitive than what I first expected. And mm. so it's really nice to have an ally in what I'm doing because I can sense check things with him and he can sense check things with me. Um, I have like major brand envy when he releases his posters. I'm like, oh, you asshole, this looks so good. And he's like, I can help you out. I'm like, no, <laughs> I do this myself. And so we, it's, it's cool. Also, it's like friendly competition, right? Where what he does, I'm inspired by. So I'll do something and then he'll go, damn, you did that so well. And then he'll do it. And Awesome. You have to be, you yeah. have to have colleagues or somebody that you can just bounce things off yes. with each other in this industry where it's really small. I mean, it's you and Carl, basically. Look, there are other kink and fetish spaces, not so many pop-up events. Um, you know, we're not, we're not the first people to establish a kink scene in the country. There are definitely existing BDSM and kink scenes and spaces and fetish places um, that you can attend. It's, it, it's, 
I think what we do is different because a lot of those spaces are play spaces mm. where you go and you interact with other people on a sexual level or on a, maybe not sexual, maybe it's more BDSM related. Um, but for us, we keep that very contained. So ours is a pants on party, um, well, front bottoms covered. Um, but that's kind of what sets it apart is it's a dance party. Um, in the BDSM community, there's a thing called a munch, which is like a social get together for people who are interested in similar things to meet outside of a play space, very chilled, toned down situation. And then on the other extreme, you've got your BDSM clubs or your fetish clubs where people are going to interact and play. So for us, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. It's not quite the chilled munch and it's not quite the hardcore play party. It's a dance party in between where you can meet people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in. Um, but if you want to play, you can book a room. Our venue is amazing, mm -hmm. spectacular venue. It's called Villa Simon, it's in Halton. Oh, awesome. Um, and they, they're a boutique hotel. And so if you want to do whatever you want to do, you can book your room in advance and what you do in your room is your business. I don't feel comfortable hosting a play space at this stage. I just think there's so much risk involved. Um, I think your monitoring and your safety has to be really, really excellent. Um, and I think while I grow, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Maybe also because Eden's really big. Yes. We have about 300 people, so. Well, so can you just explain what, what you mean by hosting your own um, play party uh, in terms of, um, you know, if they want to rent a room, if they want to take a room for the night, they can. Yes. And you said you're not ready for the alternative, which is? The alternative would be a, a communal play space where people can interact sexually or sensually with each other. Um, for example, I went to, it no longer exists, I went to a party in London called Crossbreed, similar to your torture garden. Um, or Forboten, where those clubs will have a room that is dedicated for people to interact sexually. Right. We don't have a room like that. We have stations, so we have a spanking person, we have a shibari station, we actually have two shibari people because it's so popular, everybody mm. wants to get tied up for the yeah. first time or the fifth time or whatever. Mm. It's very, very difficult to find a good rope top up in here. Mm. Um, <laughs> holla at me. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so it's almost like an introduction to those things. If you've never been spanked before, great place to start. If you've never been tied up, great place to start. But people are not bringing their own spanking implements or their own rope and tying each other up in that space purely because it is so difficult to make sure that it stays safe and safety is paramount for us. Okay, so now I get what you're saying about um, boundaries and safety. Yes. Um, if I'm not into kink, can I come? I mean, you can. Um, we have some people who are maybe kink curious or who don't quite know what to expect or think that they might be interested and they come along. But we do have a very strict dress code. Mm -hmm. We do this because if somebody arrives in jeans and a t-shirt, firstly, they stick out like a sore thumb. Secondly, everybody else who's made themselves vulnerable to a degree feels watched. They feel observed or voyeured in a way that they haven't consented to. We're all experiencing a level of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. When we get there, everybody is dressed a certain way because we're all kind of putting it out there. Everybody has to, to some degree, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean loads of skin. There's a misconception, I think, that in order to come to Eden, you have to be half naked. Totally not the case, but you do need to make an effort to some degree. And our general rule is if you can walk into the mall without anyone looking at you funny, you're not dressed correctly. Mm -hmm. Got it. So if I have a leather uh, fetish, yes, could I come head to toe in leather? 100%. Uh -huh. In fact, please do. Uh -huh. yes. Got to get that uh, cat suit out. <laughs> <laughs> but for people who are not interested in kink at all, probably not the space for you. Mm. Um, you know, the, the spectrum of kink is so wide and so vast. Um, but if you're a missionary with the lights off kind of person and you're not interested in showing off your new set of lingerie or you don't have any fetishes that you're interested in exploring in public um, or sex makes you uncomfortable or any 
it's just not the space because you will see mm. nipples, you will see ass, and you will see spanking. It's just not, if it's going to make you uncomfortable. Mm. So it's definitely for people who are either already know that they're kinky or are curious about kink and want to come and meet other people and see what the space is like. Mm. So that would kind of make sense to me because I'm not shy. Mm. I'm open and kink curious, let's mm. say. And the idea of dancing, uh, you know, it's a dance party, you yes. say. It sounds absolutely awesome. Um, so it sounds like a place, if like for, for myself, being kink curious to abide by the, the dress code mm. and come along and just have some fun. 100%. Among people who I actually feel more comfortable with, let's say, yeah. than at a, a club party. Yes. Uh. And the interesting thing is... Um, We've had people and we've actually had staff say, so our first party was at a club in Ilovo. And when the staff first heard what kind of party it was, they were all a bit like, ooh, am I going to be safe? Am I going to be okay? And the next day when we went to go break down, I had so many members of staff and bar staff come up to me and say, I've never felt so safe at work because there's an inherent understanding of people who are attending that consent is the most important thing mm. that we do and there is no reason to touch anybody or even look at somebody too long if they're not comfortable um there's there's no need to gr like you go into a regular club mm. someone will pinch your ass so you, someone might sexually harass you someone might spike your drink we we have such a priority and emphasis on safety and consent that for the most part we've we've just had such good experiences with people fe feeling safe in the mm. environment and yeah. so if you're not kinky if, if it's not something that you're maybe familiar with, it's such a lovely launch point. It's a really good soft kink experience where you can come and you can see, but you don't have to get spanked. You don't have to get tied up. You can just stay and dance and hang out and have a drink with your friends. Um, it doesn't have to be this interactive thing. You can kind of participate as much or as little as you want from the baseline of I've dressed up to be a part of this event. Mm. I love that idea. And um what I also, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, a regular club, everybody's kind of like vying each other out, you mm. know, they're all giving each other eyes and here it sounds as though like really nobody's interested in you, really, and you know... It, I wouldn't say that. I think, you know, everybody is putting themselves on display a little bit, right? Like we're all kind of hot to go. Yes. Um, I think it's definitely a very horny party. Like it's, it's not a case of everyone's kind of ignoring each other. There's definitely a, a checking out going on. Mm. But it's a, I think the difference is the boundary and going, I'm not going to approach someone unless I'm confident that they want me to approach them. Mm. And if they're visibly uncomfortable or if they say, hey, I'm not interested because I'd like to think that our, our guests feel comfortable to say that. Um and um, to, to be able to say, hey, not really interested, that mm. the approaching person will be like, okay, no worries, mm. bye. I guess what I'm referring to is no judgment. No judgment. That's exactly what I'm kind of mm. getting at. Yeah. And it's such a lovely experience for people who have all of this stuff. I mean, my wardrobe is like overflowing with leather and latex and all sorts of shit. And there's no way for me to wear it. Mm. Um, and still every Eden comes around and I go, I really have to go shopping. I want to find something. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly, the no judgment thing. When you say, yeah, no one's looking no one's looking at you and thinking, what a freak. Yeah, exactly. If they are, it's what a freak. Exactly. You know, <laughs> it's, it's definitely yeah. in a good way. Um, yeah. And so that's really fun. Is that no, And that's also why we keep the, that dress code in force. Because mm. if I'm in my nipple pasties and I turn around and I see homie in a basketball jersey, I'm going to feel yeah. immediately vulnerable. I'm already going to feel like there's a power dynamic that I didn't agree to. And so we're all starting on that baseline. Nobody's judging anybody because we're all there to be freaks. What are nipple pasties? Nipple pasties, little um, like stick-ons, like sticky things that you put over your nipples. Uh -huh. They come in shapes and sizes. I've got a little red pair that are hearts with tassels. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that sounds cute. You see them a lot in burlesque. Oh, amazing. It's like when you strip down to everything, yes. but your nipples are still covered. We are nipple friendly. Um, yeah, you can totally free the nipple regardless of gender at our parties. Um, but I do love a good nipple pasty. That's amazing. I think I should go shopping. Um, that's really fantastic. So now I was thinking about Eden the fruit. Yes. Because it, it does say something like that on your, your, um, your Instagram page. And I was just thinking about this play on words, mm. like eaten the fruit. Eaten the fruit. Eden the fruit. Yes. What do you think about that? The fruit 
was the basis for the brand. Um, I'm so interested in blasphemy as a kink. Um, it's one of my personal kinks. Um, shout out to Christian School for doing that to me. Um, and so when I was putting this together, Eden made sense to me because I think about the, the trouble Eve got into for eating the apple. The apple that is the fruit of knowledge, mm. the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. I just think there can be nothing more spectacular than that. And, and oh, there's an amazing poem. Um, I, I would love to find it if you'll give me a second. Mm, sure, with pleasure. Um, because I want to credit the, the author. Um, yeah, so it, it does. I mean, even Eden itself gives a very ethereal kind of um, feeling, yes. but I can imagine that in a very naughty kind of context as well. So the poem is by Megan McAuliffe O'Leary and it's called What I Would Tell Eve. Eat the fucking apple. <laughs> They're going to blame you regardless. You might as well go to the gallows with a full belly knowing more than God. Love it. And I just think that's so beautiful because eat, eat the fruit. Why would you want to remain ignorant, eat the fruit, know as much as you can. The knowledge of good and evil speaks to us about boundaries, about what is okay or appropriate when it comes to engaging with someone and what's not okay. Um, it, I, I just think there can be nothing better for a person than to know the difference between good and evil. Yeah. Um, and so to know these things, uh, I would so much rather know. And it comes back to knowledge is power. Exactly. It comes back to sex ed. It comes back to say yes to information, learn as much as you can um, and go to the gallows with a full belly, you know, eat, mm. eat the fruit. And so for, for us, the fruit, is, the fruit is that mindset. Let me find, wait, I've got a whole reference mm. thing here of what the fruit actually is and means. Um, yeah, hold on, sorry. So I'm just going to butt in while you're looking. Go ahead, yeah. But um, somehow it, the whole concept is giving me the, uh, obviously, I mean, um, Eve ate the fruit. Mm. Mm. Um, and there's a lot to say about that, um, that if we want to look at it in terms of um, cisgender, heterosexual, whatever, you know, Eve is a woman mm. who who ate the fruit, she, mm. she defied what was told to her. Yes. And in a way, this is also a play on that like... 100%. Defiance of um, the natural, the, the expected. Yes. It's the defiance, yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's about disobeying orders mm. um, for the sense of knowledge because you're better off for it, right? So, so yes, you eat the fruit, you do the thing you're kind of not supposed to do. You mm. take your top off, you get your nipples out, you dance in a certain way, you, 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 you disobey what is expected of you inside of a normal environment. And mm. creating a space like that, creating that garden of Eden is you come into this space and you can, you can eat the fruit, mm -hmm. right? It's no, it's no longer a sin, or if it is a sin, we're going to celebrate that sin. We're sinner positive. We, we love sinners. Mm. Um, come and eat the fruit. Uh, and we do actually have physical bowls of fruit and platters of fruit around. Um, and, and it's exactly that. Eat the fruit, disobey. And when you do, enjoy it. Relish in that thing that you're not quite supposed to do. Let it drip down your chin and invite the full sensual experience because there are not a lot of places where we can break out of our daily molds. And so this is that place where you can come and eat the fruit, disobey, do the thing you're not supposed to do um, within reason and boundaries, yes. of course. What I loved about what you said is the sensations. Mm. Like feel the sensations and kink and fetishism is all about sensations, right? Yes. To a certain extent, yeah. I think for me, and that's really something we wanted to bring through with Eden, is that idea of sensory mm. Um, and so we, we try to cater to all the senses and that's why we have spanking stations and rope, um, for the, for that physical sensation. And, and that would re that's what really intrigues me about the space and actually kink in general is, um, also like the lines between kink and BDSM. I've been having discussions recently that have like, 
I don't know, where people have tried to like really quite firmly separate them. And I think mm. there's so much crossover. Um, but sensation, I think, is firstly the most important thing about sex, mm -hmm. but also the most important thing about our party because it's evidence that it doesn't all have to be sexual. I would say our party isn't that sexual, it's sensual. Mm -hmm. It's about how you feel when you feel the rope against your skin. It's about the fruit that you eat and what you taste. It's about the music that you listen to. It's about, well, the scent is mostly sweat, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's got its own thing going on. Um, and of course, what you see and, and the way everybody's dressed and how we present the party is is that visual element. And so we're including a range of senses in this because that to me is what kink and pleasure is really about, is, is about sensuality. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that about Eden. They think that it's this like no holds barred, like you come in and you can fuck who you want and whatever, like dark room, Berghain vibes. It's not, um, you know, it's all within boundaries and within reason. Um, but it, it emphasizes the, the sensuality over mm. the sexuality. Mm. And as you're speaking about that sensuality and the sexuality, what's coming up for me as well is the, the playfulness. Mm. Because we often, when we get into relationships, we forget how to play yeah. like we played when we first met. And so this is something as well that I'm trying to get my clients to connect with is that sense of play, using their senses, yeah. um, trying to, you know, touching different fabrics and different objects and um, different textures and things like that and then tasting different things and smelling and having different sounds and so on. Mm. Um, also to heighten the pleasurable experience yes. of that sensual experience instead of focusing all on that orgasm you yeah know, which we we all love a good orgasm but it's more about that that pleasure space that playful space and and what I also love about Eden what it sounds like it's really playful yeah it is and our venue is so over the top and just ridiculous so this little boutique hotel the owner actually grew up in in the house, sure. which I don't understand. I mean, it's freaking massive and crazy. And there's like marble desks in one of the rooms. I'm like, how did this even get in here? Did you have a crane? Like what happened? And so he inherited this house and turned it into this boutique hotel and all the rooms have different themes. So we've got the Moulin Rouge room and you've got the, the Picasso room or the Dali room or whatever. And then there's the Emperor Nero. And it's like all so over the top and ridiculous, but the communal spaces as well, like the bar is full of these like plush velvets and these, it's, it's so, it's so close to the line of kitsch that it's just cool. It's <laughs> so, it. it's so kitschy. It's cool. It's, it's honestly amazing. And so the space itself, we're just so lucky to have found such an amazing place because it's outdoors. We've got a garden, we have a pool. We actually do like a pool party in the afternoon and, and so from a sensation and play perspective, it's kind of like being in a little playground that mm. you do, you want to explore things and go and see. And there's like tortoises in the garden and like you want to you wanna go see what's upstairs and what's over here and ooh, let's have a swim in the pool. And, and so it, it really does bring out that playful exploration, like, oh, let's go on an adventure mm. as a space. Sounds like so much fun. Um, Really, really, it does. It sounds like something I would really love to come and explore. Yeah, please do. Um, got to right, find the right friend to bring, though. <laughs> well, our next party is on the 5th of October. Sure, okay. At Villa Simone. Mm. Um, and the, the nice thing is if you do come alone, everybody's so lovely and friendly and judgment-free. So um, one thing that we have is um, we have saints. We appoint saints. And these are our volunteers who are there all night long. And they are there to greet people, make friends, say hi. And then if anything does go wrong, they're the people, the first point of contact mm -hmm. who deal with it. So if we have something like overindulgence, this is a big thing um, that I've noticed is people really don't know how to self-regulate their alcohol intake. Mm. Um, and sometimes when people are alone, they don't realize how much they've had to drink. And in fact, when we've dealt with people who are super, super out of it, it's generally people who've come on their own. Mm. So it is good to have a buddy system, bring a friend, um, but we do have saints on duty just in case. And then if anything needs to be escalated to security, then we do that. Um, but yeah, mindful consumption is one of our rules. Mm. Yeah. 
I was thinking sinner and saints. Yeah. Now I understand how the saints come in. <laughs> yes. So the sinners are our spanx, our spankstress, our rope people, um, our shabari artists, and then the saints are the people who they might, yeah, the mostly sober people who are who have they work in shifts. Mm. They're volunteers and they keep an eye out because I can't be everywhere. Yeah. Um, and so it's really amazing and important for me to have a team of people who are looking out for the safety of the party. So if anybody's being creepy, if anyone is has had too much to drink, if anyone is experiencing a problem for any reason, that there are points of contact that they can go and speak to and find support if needed. Whether that means getting you an Uber home or kicking the creepy person out of the party, whatever it is, We'll deal with it. It really sounds fantastic. And um, it, it really, like, kudos to you. You know, I don't mean it in a condescending way, but you've read your audience. You know, you've read your audience and you you know what people want, you know what people need. And, um, yeah, you, you need to have a sensible head on you. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I've heard over the years of things, of parties where really – there's um, there are no boundaries and mm. there's no protections, no safety, and that's why these these kind of parties of all sorts really close down. Yeah. Um, and so I say this really well done. This is, sounds really amazing that you've taken this on single handedly. Thank this you. Really outstanding. Thank you. Can I read you our rules? Yes. And our dress code. Yes. Okay. So. We call it the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. We do not tolerate any form of discrimination. If you are racist, transphobic, homophobic, fatphobic, or bigoted in any way, do not come. You have been warned. We cultivate a culture of consent. Violators will be weeded out immediately. Nature is decorative. Follow her lead. If you can walk into a grocery store without anyone staring, you're not dressed correctly and will be turned away by our keepers at the door. This is not a sex party. Don't fuck on the dance floor. Keep your pants on. A coat room will be provided. Be present. No broadcasting inside the garden and no phone photography, including selfies. Respect yourself and others. This is a rule for life. Be mindful of your consumption and your limits. Drink plenty of water. The word of our keepers, who are the people at the door, and saints is law. Don't argue. Love it. And you have to take, I mean, the nice thing about kink and BDSM is that um, in a power dynamic, people are generally used to following a rule or, mm. or enforcing a rule, understanding a rule. And I found that the BDSM community specifically is so good with boundaries, mm. like just amazing. Like they know what the rules are mm. and they're happy to abide by them because they understand that rules are the things that keep us safe. So while one of our core values is disobey, it's kind of disobey, disobey in the sandpit, disobey mm. within the boundaries that we have, disobey the rest of the world. But in here, you're in my house, you're in my garden, you'll play by my rules. And I think that line is so important because the community that we've fostered really values it. I mean, there are some people, some saints who I just know, like will put up an event and they're like reporting for saint duty. And I'm like, thank you so much because they really care so much about having a space to exist in alongside people who are interested in the things that they're interested in, that they're willing to do the work mm. to keep it safe. And, and the community, that's, also why I refer to it as we, because the community around it is just so amazing and so committed to the longevity of the community. They don't want something awful to happen to somebody because then the party's going to get shut down and no, then we don't have a place to play anymore. Exactly. So we got to keep it safe. And for like 99% of our guests adhere to everything. And that 1% is firmly dealt with and banned pretty much for life. Sure. Yeah, I hate to be that one. Percent. No, and <laughs> sure, there's always like some. There's always that one guy. Like, there's the one guy who comes in and he's yeah. like not quite in the vibe. He's like, I've been to Africa, burn. I'm like, that's so nice for you, but like, <laughs> can you fuck off? You're making the girls scared. <laughs> like, you're freaking people out. It's time to go. Thanks, buddy. Um, and it's hard. Like, as a a person who's so used to making people feel comfortable and wanted and welcome, um, to be that person who's like, time's up, gotta yeah. go. Um. But that's also why we have security people and saints because I don't always have to be the bitch in the situation. Like I can pass that on to someone else and I can just yeah. be like, are you having a great time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds fantastic. Really, it, I'm, my interest is peaked. My curiosity is peaked. 
Um, and I will abide by the rules of and course. the dress code. <laughs> um, I just need to find a fellow sinner. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, bring all your sinner friends. We'd love to have you. It's, it's, really, it's a really good time. Great. It's a really good time. I, we took a break over winter because it's mm. so freaking cold. Um, although our first party was in the middle of winter last mm. year. And I needed 100 people to make it work, to break mm. even. I needed 100 people. Mm. And we had about 180 on the 30th of June. Wow. In a club in Ilovo. It was so hot and sweaty outside. There was a tiny little balcony. It was rammed with people in their little lingerie, smoking their cigarettes on this little balcony. It was just amazing. So people do yeah. come out in winter, but our current venue is mostly outdoors. So we took yeah. a break over winter. And now that it's getting warmer again, oh, I just can't wait to get in the pool to see yeah. everyone doing their things. Like it's such a feast for the eyes. Like even if you're not looking to hook up with anyone or to meet people, just to be there and observe is such a such an amazing thing because people pull out all the stops. Oh, I mean, we had someone at the last one or the one before in a pair of massive Victoria's Secret angel wings. And it just, it's so striking. Like people really pull out all the stops, you know, and, and we've had people making their own outfits, doing their own things. It's just phenomenal it's an awesome space to be in so please come and play well just your enthusiasm and your excitement over it just is uh, enough to bring me there cool <laughs> <laughs> good to Mia, know it's been an absolute pleasure having you on our podcast and um my curiosity in terms of eden is now um say i can safely say from this podcast that i know exactly what eden is better but as I say I have to come and experience it I think the only way to truly know is to be there and to feel it and to see it and smell it and taste mm. it and to eat the fruit uh, absolutely and I would love to come and eat the fruit but more importantly your work um, in terms of being a sex educator and um, being so open for everybody to come and be and feel and just um, experience your openness, especially on radio as well. What a, what a gift. What a gift that you can give people. It feels like a gift to me, honestly. I mm. have this thing that I love mm. that I get to show the world and give gift to the world, but it's a gift for me as well. It's, it's life's work yeah. for me, really. Um, and, you know, if I can convince one person to use a condom that one time, you know, and, and on air, the questions we get sometimes, it's like, my friend told me that you don't need to use a condom when you have sex with a virgin because you can't get HIV. Or my friend told me that you actually need to use two condoms. Or my friend told me this. And it's, it's amazing to be able to say, hey, mm. not only is that not true, but now that you know the truth, mm. you now need to go and be a candle in your community. You need to go back to your friend who told you that you don't need to use a condom and be like, actually, bro, that's not true because mm. you don't know that she's a virgin. And secondly... What if she's got HIV from a previous infection? And actually, what if you've got HIV? Or what if you've got a different STI and you pass it on to her? What about getting pregnant? You know, to mm. have that, to be able to go, okay, your turn now. You go tell your friends. You go be that candle in your community. That is, that's life's work for me. That's, that's a mm. gift to me because mm. all I want ultimately is a safer and more pleasurable place for women and queer people. Absolutely. And South Africa is a, fucking horrible place to be as a woman mm. and so if I can speak to women and men and people of all genders across the spectrum and encourage safety without being sanitized safety that includes pleasure mm. thinking about sex in a way that is pleasure forward and that the point of sex is pleasure suddenly it's like okay cool if I want to have a good time then I need to feel safe because if I'm more comfortable, then I'll have a better time. And if I'm safe, then I'm going to be more comfortable. So let me use this condom this time, or let me make sure I take my contraceptive or mm -hmm. whatever that thing is that makes you feel safe. If you're prioritizing your safety, you're prioritizing your comfort and then your pleasure gets to follow. And, and that is the point. Yeah. So eat the fruit, not just at Eden in life, just to encourage that eating of that fruit. Mm -hmm. um, even if you think you're not entitled to it or you're not allowed to feel pleasure or, or if you think that sex is an obligation. I had such a weird experience last night where we had two questions. One was from a guy who says he comes home after months away and he feels unwanted by his wife and um, 
what can he do? And another guy who says, my, my girlfriend doesn't love sex, so I have to force her to have sex with me. And I'm like, hey, maybe let's not force people into having sex with us. Because I know that I wouldn't be very excited to do it if someone was forcing me to, you know, and, and you know, I wish I could speak to his partner and be like, hey, girl, you don't need to be with someone who's going to force you to do stuff you don't want to do. You are entitled to pleasurable, safe sex. And if this guy's not doing that for you, you can leave. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, and so, you know, eating the fruit, I think, isn't just about disobeying the rules. I think it's about indulging in the incredible sensory offerings of life. Like so many of us hate our bodies as women. Like we hate our bodies because we've been told that if you just spend this much money, then it'll be fine. Um, but if you see the body as a tool for sensual experience, if you see your eyes as things that can see the sunset, if your skin is something that can feel tactile and, and, and a massage and tingles and mm. tickles and mm. sex and stimulation, if your yeah. ears can hear music, why would you hate yeah. your body? Yeah. And so eating the fruit is about indulging your senses, yeah. exploring pleasure, prioritizing pleasure and everything else that follows. We just have to quieten the mind. Mm. That's really what it's about and just be in the body, be mm. in the moment and enjoy those sensations. Well, Leah, it's been really so fantastic to have you with us and um, please send me those details about the next party. I definitely will. For anyone who's listening, it's on the 5th of October at Villa Simon Boutique Hotel. Tickets are available at Quickets. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, our audience, I'm sure, will be heading their way. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us again. Looking very forward to have you uh, with us again next episode. I think that we're going to be speaking to the Ministry of Menstruation. The Minister of Menstruation, yeah, Minister Candice of Chira. Yes, yes, I exactly. actually saw her on, at my walking club and she said, oh, I'm going to be on Totally Me's podcast. Oh, and I was really? like, oh, that's so crazy oh, fantastic. I'm doing that next week. <laughs> oh, fantastic, yes. I've known her for quite a, a long time, um, but I'd, I've never had her on my podcast, so I'm looking very forward to that. She's amazing. Yeah, I'm she looking forward fantastic. to that too. Candice, that's right. Well, have a lovely um, day further. Thank you. And um, we'll hopefully see you very soon. Thank you. And thank you so much. I will make a little promo code as well okay. um, for listeners if who, who want to come. Great. Um, just type in Totally Me at checkout for 20% off your ticket. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. All right, learner lovers, we are out now.